This week I am in sunny Arizona. I have four full days of thrift shopping to share with you. I am so excited to see what the thrift stores are like here. First off, I hit up a few Goodwills and unfortunately they were nothing like the Goodwills that I am used to and I really didn't find that many great items, but keep watching because some of the other shops that I hit up ended up being really wonderful. You guys who watch me regularly know that I love hitting up the belts. They're also a great thing to pick up when you're traveling because they pack up well, they don't break, and a lot of times other resellers will overlook this section. And as you can see, the prices were pretty reasonable. I did end up picking up that woven leather belt. Uh, that was the only thing I got at this thrift store though because the items were either poor quality or anything good was marked up. They had this faux Hermes bag and they still had it priced at $30. I mean, that's just crazy. This Kate Spade was cute, but the handle ended up being totally worn out and they wanted 20 bucks for it. That was just too much a Michael Kors bag and this was priced up. This really opened my eyes to how some of you have said your thrift stores are just priced outrageously. Even this worn out Rebecca Minkoff was almost $30. I don't even think that would sell online for that price. Keep watching all the way to the end though because I do end up hitting up some better thrift stores and some of the best items that I find are towards the end of the video and you don't wanna miss that. The shoes were very well organized, but anything good was priced up again, 50 bucks for these shoes. They would cost less at Ross. I hit up a St. Vincent. It ended up being a pretty nice shop. They had some good quality items, a good selection, and I felt like their prices were pretty fair. I loved this table. Had I been home and if it wasn't already sold, I would have picked it up. I've already sold a similar table to that uh, for over $800. This store also had a bunch of good belts. I think I ended up picking up 20 or 30 belts this trip, which is great because I usually profit about $15 per belt. So there's definitely money to be made here. I think I got six or seven at this location. I'm back from Phoenix and it turned out to be a really great trip. The first few days weren't that great, uh, but I ended up getting a total of 47 items, which I think is pretty great. I spent $365, which made my average uh, price per item about $7.75, which is a little on the high side, but when I'm traveling, I am willing to pay up a little bit for items. I added up uh, what I will list items at and kind of what I expect to sell them for, and all of these items total a potential sales amount of over $2,500. So that is really exciting. If you are new here, hi, I'm Amy and this is Thrift Adventure. I'm a full-time reseller, primarily on the Poshmark app, but I do dabble on other online platforms and I sell locally. Uh, if you are enjoying my videos, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2024, and I'd really love it if you would help me out with that. As you can see, unfortunately, my first couple of stops were pretty disappointing. A few of them I came out empty handed. One of them, I uh, these were all Goodwills that I stopped at first because usually uh, Goodwill produces for me no matter where I go, but apparently not in Phoenix, Arizona. I did pick up this little tan woven leather belt. It has some kind of uh, decoration on the buckle. I paid $4.49. Don't worry, it does get better. I ended up stopping at a St. Vincent de Paul and that was better. I had asked in uh, one of the thrifting groups on Facebook and someone recommended that so I decided to give that a try. I picked up quite a few belts. Some of them were half price and I liked this one. It's a men's belt and it has an inset of snake skin. It was $5. I believe the orange tag ones were half off. 
I'm not going in any particular order on these belts, but um, I did also hit up uh, White Dove Boutique and you will see some footage from that. Those were beautiful thrift stores, very well curated and organized. Although the prices were a little bit higher, uh, I was, I really enjoyed thrifting in there. And so sometimes uh, that's just as good as having a cheap price. So I got this brown woven leather belt. It is in excellent condition. Again, some of these were half off. There was one day that I visited that all accessories were half off. This one was $10. Almost all of my belts I will list at approximately $39 in let unless it is a really special piece, uh, a certain designer name. I also hit up a thrift store called Deseret Industries, and I believe uh, that that is a Mormon run thrift store, and they were huge, very well organized. Uh, the prices were really reasonable. I picked up this belt from there. It's kind of a burgundy color. I think it is men's. Oh, this one was actually Dooney and Burke. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, uh, but that's why I picked it up. They missed that. It was only $3. They did have, um, you know, most of their things were like three, four, five dollars $5, very affordable. There was a lot of clothing. However, because I had limited space and I am trying to not buy as much clothing, I decided to not really look through that. Here is another piece that I got from that White Dove thrift store, and it is to benefit hospice. And again, some of these I paid full price for. Some of them uh, were half off. This one was marked $12. And I just like the two-tone. It's Johnston and Murphy. And then it also says some different type of leather. Aniline Kipskin Shoulders, made in USA. So I thought that was interesting. This uh, was at a, another thrift store, a little area in um, Pecora, I think is what it was. I'll have to double check that. Um, and that is where I ended up finding the most best stuff for the best prices. And that was on the second to last day. Uh, so I really loved this belt. Uh, actually, I'm wrong. This was at a little thrift shop called Thrift and Thrive, and it was also a very well organized thrift store, uh, very nicely curated, like they didn't have junk or stained stuff. Some of their prices were a little bit higher, uh, but this wasn't too bad. It was only $4. I liked the studded detail, kind of has a Western look to it. Let's see, I think I also picked this one up at that Thrift and Thrive shop in Phoenix, Arizona. It's just a black leather belt. I don't see a price on this, but I think the unmarked belts were $3. So as you can see, I got a ton of belts. Oh, I really loved this one. This one was also from the White Dove thrift store and I liked it because it had this horse bit uh, style buckle, which gave it a designer look to it. It is marked Audrey Talbot, which I have never heard of. I will look up that designer name. It was $6. This could be a higher end belt. Okay, uh, also at that uh, area called uh, Pecora. I don't even think that's right. I'm gonna have to pause and look that up. Um, but I, there were, so someone had recommended a Lutheran thrift store in that area and it was huge. They had tons of jewelry, clothing, uh, glassware, all sorts of things. Again, I was looking for small items that I could fit in a suitcase. And um, like I said, I was kind of avoiding clothing. But so I went to that Lutheran thrift store and then within that like strip mall, there was three more thrift stores. And then on the next block, there was another four more thrift stores. Some of them were really nicely organized. Some of them were really junky. There were quite a few that were, um, let's see, 
one of my like charity thrift stores. So they, you know, there was one for a couple for cats and dogs, uh, a couple religious ones, and everyone was so nice there and friendly. And uh, there were some good prices and good items. This is a Dunian Burke leather bag. I don't know if I would have normally picked this up. Uh, but yeah, maybe I would have. It was $10. It's in pretty nice condition. Just needs a little bit of leather conditioner. And I'll hope to get, I'll probably list this at maybe 50 or 59 and hope to get somewhere between 40 and 50 for that. Also at that St. Vincent de Paul thrift store, I got a pair of men's Viore pants, which this brand is very trendy right now. Let's see if I can find another mark there. I know that it is trendy for women um, and hopefully it is for men too. These felt really, really nice. They were only priced at $5.95. I liked this uh, St. Vincent store because uh, they had a nice selection of, you know, quality items, some name brand items, uh, but they weren't outrageously priced up, which was, uh, which was nice for a change because a lot of the other thrift stores had really high priced items. So I only picked up uh, three pieces of clothing. So those pants, and then I got this sweater vest i just love this it is a crocheted or knit and then these are little suede inserts and i just thought it was really hippie boho um western i loved the bright colors it was twelve dollars uh, but I just could not pass up this unique piece. I thought someone could wear it in the winter with the turtleneck under it, or they could wear it uh, to a festival with like a bralette underneath it and make it kind of more sexy and sheer, even in hot weather. I could just not pass that up. I got uh, both of these at that uh, White Dove thrift store. These are just a pair of pants for me, and if I decide I don't like them, I will resell them. They are AG, uh, and they are the ex-boyfriend slim, so they're more of a straight leg, but they were having a sale, and these were uh, marked down to $9. So for the vest, I'm going to probably price that high, maybe in the $60 range, and hope to get $40 to $50. For the Viore pants, to be honest, I really don't know how much those will sell for, but I'll hope for the $40 to $50 range. This was also from uh, one of those White Dove thrift stores, and it is just a silver plated bowl. I'm going to go ahead and turn the light off here so maybe you can see that a little bit better. Uh, but I just really loved the etched detail on that. It's marked Made in England. I don't always pick up silver plated items, uh, but this one was only $5 and I just thought it was really unique. And I'll probably list this on Cherish in the $40 to $50 range, $39 or $49. I think uh, someone else will like that and I'll use words, you know, like trinket dish or catch all. And uh, hopefully someone will use that by their front door. Oh, so this I wasn't really sure about. I don't know if you can see that, but it is marked CD on there. And I thought it might be for Christian Dior. When you look down in on the buckle, it says made in Italy. So I am hoping uh, that it is. This was only $4 and it re reverses from black to brown. I thought this was a great piece a black leather belt I liked this kind of textured oval buckle it was in very nice condition I did try and focus on getting black leather belts or men's belts because uh, I have less men's belts and the black leather belts tend to sell better for me this was only three dollars at that St. Vincent de Paul let's see more belts uh, don't don't go anywhere. There is quite a bit of jewelry to share and also quite a few hard goods a very particularly exciting hard good. I'll try and move the, through these quickly a brown woven leather belt. I believe that the orange was half off. So this was a dollar fifty. 
This is a men's brown leather Carhartt belt with a brass buckle. And I don't see a price on this, but I can't imagine I would have paid more than three or four dollars for that. I thought this was a cute little skinny belt with a, a decorative print on it, and it was only a dollar fifty half off. I hit the jackpot with belts at this uh, St. Vincent de Paul. I liked this kind of uh, mock croc print belt. I believe that this is men's. I'm not certain though. It is marked Onyx by Brighton. I think that it could be worn by men or women and it was five dollars. So lots of profit to be made on belts. Heading into White Dove Thrift Shop. All of the proceeds from these shops go to hospice and they ended up being by far my favorite thrift stores that I went to in Arizona. One of the reasons is they had so much jewelry. They had, you know, lower end costume pieces and fine jewelry. The prices were on the high end, uh, but I did end up picking up a few pieces. The items in the cases were just phenomenal gorgeous uh, fine jewelry collectible designer everything you could think of it was so much fun they also had a lot a, a lot of collectible cases but as you can see the prices were quite high close to ebay pricing also the way they were set up uh, was just really fun and beautiful the volunteers did their did a great job there at displaying the items I looked at this piece and I really wish I would have picked it up. The price wasn't too bad. I think I'd ended up deciding to pass because it was breakable and I was afraid of traveling with it. For a minute here, I thought I scored big. I thought those could have been Hermes little plates, but unfortunately they were not. As you can see, like I said, everything was just displayed beautifully. They had nice, high quality items. And if you're shopping for yourself, the prices weren't too bad. And there were some deal deals to be found for resale. This was actually at another location. I just wanted to show you again how they had the home decor displayed. It was just so fun. It felt like an antique store or a boutique. And they just had great items. I loved this little doggy guy. He was so cute. Cute. Now on to more of my haul. I really thought this was a super cool statement belt, probably maybe from the 90s, Y2K, I'm not sure. And this is vegan friendly faux leather, I would think. And it's kind of a champagne gold color. I did pay up for that a little bit. I paid $8, but I will probably price this on the higher end, maybe $49 or $59, just because it is a really unique piece. This is a vintage Pierre Cardin belt. Uh, I just liked the, the buckle, and then I liked how it was mock croc. This was marked $8. Again, that's a men's piece, so that was why I was more motivated to pick it up, but it could be worn by men or women. A super wide kind of reptile print belt, uh, very nice condition. This is Chico's brand, and it was marked $6. Again, some of these were half off, but I'm not sure which. This was also from one of those small thrift stores. I just liked it because it was wide. It had this perforated detail has the um, kind of studded detail. This is, I don't know what this brand is. I'll have to look that up, but it was only $2, a great buy. Now let's go into the jewelry. The jewelry at these White Dove thrift stores was just amazing. Uh, it was priced, it was priced almost like boutique prices or like antique store prices, some of it was, uh, but some of it was priced somewhat affordably. And of course, you know, I picked up the good pieces. Oh, I'm actually wearing one of the pieces. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but this is a butterfly wing uh, set under glass or plastic. And so it has this beautiful iridescent blue quality. It was only $3. I was very excited because I had wanted one of these for a long time and I had just never bought one. I got this rhinestone necklace. I liked the 
shape of the stones on it. I just thought it was a little bit different and it was only $2. I've mentioned before that I don't do super well with plain rhinestones, you know, the clear plain rhinestones, uh, but I just thought this was a really pretty piece that you could even wear with like a spring dress or something like that. Actually, I'm going to keep that on. This piece I was pretty excited about. Uh, and I still need to do more research on it, but it is like a crystal ball at the bottom with some little rice pearls. And the clasp leads me to believe that it is older. I think that this could be what they call pools of light. And if you uh, look at that on eBay, that these can go for high dollar amounts. I'm not certain, like I said, I need to do more research. I did pay up a little bit for this. I paid $15. I'm not sure if you can uh, see that price or not, uh, but let me know in the comments down below. Do you know anything about the pools of light and what I should look out for uh, to determine if that is indeed one of those? Oh, and at this thrift store, there was a Native American ring with coral and I think turquoise. And I really wanted it for myself. And I didn't end up buying it because it was $85. And I have been kicking myself ever since. I bought a different ring from TJ Maxx because it was only $20. And I should have just paid up uh, because I don't know if I'll ever be able to find one just like it again. This is a really spectacular piece. I believe that this is either uh, Austrian crystal or um, now I cannot think of uh, what the other would be, but it is definitely an antique piece with this beautiful purple glass, uh, possibly rolled gold or gold plated, possibly brass uh, setting, but I just thought this was stunning. Again, I did pay up for this. I paid $45, but I'm going to list this between $129 and $149. I may actually list that purple necklace higher. I do need to do more research. I also got these Givenchy clip-on earrings. Again, I paid up for these. I paid $25, but I have had good luck selling this Givenchy for good prices in the past. And with the mob wife trend, I really think that I should be able to get in the $60 to $80 range for these. Oh, I took my uh, butterfly wing necklace off, so hopefully you guys can see that a little bit better. So it is a Morpho butterfly wing and it has this beautiful blue purple iridescent quality to it. And I am just thrilled that I got that for such a great price. Here is the, um, the ring that I actually, that I ended up buying from TJ Maxx. And it is a really pretty ring. Uh, I liked it because it's two-tone. It has gold or brass around here, and then the setting is sterling silver. So I'm sure I will still wear that. I will insert a picture at some point of the uh, ring that I passed up on, and I just wish I wouldn't have done that. I thought this was a cool piece. I think it's probably just silver plated. I haven't been able to find a mark on it, but it has tarnish on it. Uh, could be sterling silver. It was only $4, uh, but I also thought this was a really cool piece. I love these kind of collar necklaces like this. I loved this uh, Native American style turquoise nugget necklace. This I also got at St. Vincent de Paul. I like these little mother of pearl birds. That was $4.95. I'll hope to list this. I might actually, I might keep this, uh, but if I don't, I'll probably list this in the $40 range. This, depending on how it polishes up and whether it's actual sterling or silver plate, I'll also probably list this in the $40 to $50 range. Let's see, uh, This, these two pieces were from one of the tiny charity thrift stores. And this is just a pendant with a world charm on it. And it has little semi-precious stones uh, in there like lapis and mother of pearl, and then a beaded sterling silver necklace chain. I think that this was only $3. 
And then this is a sterling silver ring with little um, smoky quartz and it was only $3. I did stop at one estate sale and I was kind of disappointed already by the time I started going estate sales. And um, I kind of was having thoughts that I wasn't gonna find anything, so I only went to one, but I did find a few things. I got this uh, citrine or lemon quartz, probably lemon quartz ring set in sterling silver. Uh, their rings were $15 a piece. I'll probably list this in the 45 to $55 range. And then this is a amethyst ring. It has a really pretty setting with hearts. Again, this was $15. These haven't been cleaned, but they will look beautiful when I clean them up. And that one will probably be also in the $40 to $50 range. Uh, I liked these little heart-shaped earrings. I'm pretty sure these are sterling silver. That one is just kind of tangled up, but they have like an etch detail and they are two-tone. These were only $3 at that estate sale. And then I picked up this little matching pendant and earring set. They have this faux kind of purple opal looking and she charged me four dollars for the set it doesn't have any sort of chain but i'm sure i can find something i just thought that was kind of a unique uh chunky set and i was kind of thinking it might be sterling silver but i did not see any marks okay so next is the find well maybe not the find of the trip possibly one of my top finds and I found this at the Lutheran charity uh, store and it is this absolutely stunning 14 karat gold necklace and it has this the stone on this just has me mesmerized I think it is some sort of citrine or fancy colored topaz I'm tempted to keep this. Uh, this is pending more research, but it is stamped 14 karat and I paid $15 for it. I could almost tell uh, by looking at it in the case that it was real gold just by the color of it. Um, you know, I don't know for sure what I'll price this at, but I would guess somewhere between $200 and $350 pending more research. But look at that stone. It's a really nice size and it just has a very unique color to it. Very dainty and delicate. Oh, I just really love this piece. Also at one of the tiny little charity thrift stores, I found this Bohemian garnet necklace. This is very delicate and I just really loved it. He only charged me $3 for this. A couple more pieces of jewelry. I also got these at a White Dove thrift store for $12. Uh, I may keep these. They are a pair of genuine turquoise hoops with uh, set in sterling silver. Did I say I paid $12 for these? If I do list these, I'll probably list them in the $50 to $60 range. I got these cute little earrings at uh, a, that Thrift and Thrive thrift store. Just really dainty kind of Native American style with a little bit of turquoise beading. These were only $3.00. Uh, I'll have to do a little bit of research on these, but I think I'll probably price these around $40 unless I find that they are more valuable. Now on to the hard goods. And this is one of the other really great uh, pieces that I found. And it is by Michael Aram. And he is an artist. His pieces are sold at Nordstrom for sure, possibly Neiman Marcus. And it is this really unique ice bucket with feet for feet. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? I did pay $25 for this, uh, but when I looked up comps, there were sold comps on eBay for up to $350. Now this did originally come with some tongs and the tongs weren't included when I bought it but I still feel like I should be able to get minimum $200 for this piece, uh, seeing it has the dust bag and everything. I was very excited uh, to find 
a couple of pieces, you know, towards the end that had higher values because uh, this I got on the second to last day. And up until then, I hadn't found any, you know, really high value items. And I found that 14 karat gold necklace. And then 10 minutes later, I found that. I was like, okay, whew, this trip is saved. Um, because, you know, I didn't have to pay for a hotel or my rental car uh, because those were paid for by my husband's employer. But I did have to pay for my flight and some food. And my flight was over $400. So I really felt like I needed to at least make that, you know, potentially make that amount back thrifting while I was there. Otherwise, it's not really a very, you know, good business trip. And uh, the weather wasn't very great. We only got one day where it was really warm enough to even sit by the pool. So this is kind of an interesting item, uh, but I got it because it was hand painted. It's very unique and it is marked Italy on the bottom. Sometimes I have good luck with Italian pottery, sometimes I don't, but I just thought this was really fun and funky uh, and it was only $4. There is a tiny chip on one of the horns here, but I will just touch that up with a Sharpie and I'll mention in the listing that it does have a couple of chips that have been touched up. I've never had a problem still selling items even when they have small flaws. I also got this at the same thrift store as I got the ice bucket. And this is just a really beautiful carved bird, possibly a um, either a pelican, what's that supposed to be, or a flamingo? I don't know, but it's all gemstones. Uh, so this is amethyst, of course. Of course. I'm not sure uh, what this is, but it has really intricate carving. Just a really beautiful piece. This I paid $10 for. It's pending more research, but you know, I'll guess somewhere in the $100 to $200 range is what I'll list it for. This may not be a super quick seller, uh, but I, it was just too beautiful to pass up for $10. And then I picked up these two uh, Asian celadon colored ducks. And I have had these something similar before in a turquoise glaze, uh, but this cel celadon green color seemed to be more desirable. And these were $5 a piece. I just thought they were really elegant. And I think the turquoise one I sold for over $100. So that could be great if I could get, you know, $100 a piece or $200 for the pair of those. Uh, next door to the estate sale, people were having a yard sale and they had this really cute little creamer and sugar out. And actually, here, I'll take the price tag because the cool thing is kind of on the other side. Well, let's see, maybe I can't get the price tag off, but it has like a little horse or a dog and it's hand painted. They had it marked $8.00. Uh, but I offered her five and she accepted that. I just thought it was a cute, unique little set. I would guess I'll probably list this somewhere between 80 and 129, depending on, you know, what these makers marks uh, help me find. And then on the very last day, I found a set of six of these Kor Korok uh, C-O-U-R-O-C brand uh, whiskey rocks glasses and these are bull and bear so like the stock market and I just thought they were kind of fun and whimsical and I thought that they would be a fun gift. I tend to do really well with barware during the holidays and I can see some someone buying their spouse who is like a, you know, real estate investor or not real, real estate stock market investor or like a hedge fund manager. I can see uh, someone getting, getting them these as a gift. So these were $2 a piece and I got $6, six of them. 
so there that was $12 I'll probably list these in the 120 to 180 dollar range depending on what comps I find for those so what do you guys think it did turn out to be a pretty great uh buying trip after all even though the first two days were very dismal and disappointing uh actually on the third day the morning of the third day i just went into scottsdale and i went to the mall i walked through some of the designer shops uh went to tj maxx i was like i just don't want to thrift anymore it's terrible here i was so disappointed uh, because so many people had told me that arizona was a really great place to thrift and maybe I just didn't do enough research to begin with, or I hit it at the wrong time, but I just didn't see very much many vintage items at all uh, at the Goodwill in particular. But I think maybe not as many people donate good things to the Goodwill in Arizona. It seemed like the charity stores was where it was at that's where the good items were and i did realize that i just had to pay up for some things and i still should be able to make a nice profit and sometimes that's just way the way it goes it was kind of a humbling experience a little bit of a wake-up call for me kind of made me uh, realize and understand a little bit more where some of you guys are coming from when you talk about your thrift stores not having much good stuff or that the prices are really high uh, so if nothing else, that's it's always a good thing to learn and be humbled and kind of be able to relate to other people uh, better. So, um, you know, it, all in all, we had a good time. We, you know, had some nice dinners and uh, I got to experience another, you know, state city that uh, I hadn't been to before. Overall, like Phoenix and the surrounding areas were somewhat depressing too. There, I didn't see a ton of like homeless encampments, but I did, it just seemed like kind of an impoverished area, if that's the right word for it. Uh, just a lot of people down on their luck. You know, you go into the bathrooms like at Walgreens and there's big signs on the garbage that show a picture of a needle with a, you know, red circle and line through it. So definitely a lot of drug use. And then you drive, you know, 20 minutes into Scottsdale and it's like the ritzy richest area and people are driving mercedes and ferraris and bentleys and just kind of sad to see the difference uh you know that 20 miles can make and how you know some people are so poor and down on their luck and then you go there and it's just so rich and wealthy i guess you know unfortunately it's just the way the world is right now um but you know it's it's always a learning experience to, uh, you know, go to different places and uh, see how things are. So I am thankful for that. Thank you so, so much for watching. And again, if you are enjoying my videos, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. And I'd love it if you would help me out with that. Also, if you could give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys all again soon. Thanks so much for watching.